All right, welcome back to the Improvement Channel. I'm glad you're here. This is part three of a three-part series where we're working on a pressure washer trailer. So if you've missed any of the others, please jump back, uh, buckle up. We're getting ready to finish this thing out. I'm getting ready to use some Rust-Oleum's Rust Reformer. Get you ready to paint over the rust. So this is not a primer. I've read a little bit online about it. So maybe a little bit confusing. There's a lot of different products out there. But this was a very cost effective way for uh, under $6 I ordered this can of uh, rust converter. So once that's all sprayed down, it dries really quickly and you are ready to paint over the rust so you don't have to worry about the rust uh, coming back through the paint later from underneath. So, so far what I've gotten done is I've moved the trailer to the side yard, I've pulled the wheels off, and I have wiped the entire thing down with wax and grease remover. Then I have come back and wiped the trailer down again just to get any loose uh, debris uh, off of the trailer before we get ready to paint. So now that that's done, I've got the uh, paint mix. I put the reducer in it so it'll be good to go on the spray. I got this all at Tractor Supply and this worked really well. The only thing that I wish I would have done is added hardener to it. I saw the hardener there, wasn't really sure about it. I got to talking to my buddy Brad over at Smoke Trailers. He said, yeah, you should have used the hardener, but it's done now. So what you see me doing here is just spraying it down. So we'll go back to the fast motion because I know this is kind of, you know, watching paint dry situation here. So just got a couple seconds here so you can kind of see what it looks like going on. So I'm trying to put a fairly thick coat down, but didn't feel like it was really thick enough. So what I did was I finished this first coat up. I gave it the 12 hours, I believe is what it said to dry. I gave it the full amount to dry and then got up early the next morning and hit it again uh, while I still had it kind of set up in the yard. I didn't want it, you know, laying around too long because it's kind of an eyesore. You'll notice that I have a canopy or something there making some shade. I don't have any large shade trees around that I could paint under and this product definitely said to not paint it in direct sunlight. So. What you're seeing me do there was move the, um, the shade on over so I could finish spraying the rest of it. So now that it's all sprayed, the next step is going to be the plastic lumber. We're going to get to that tomorrow. Today we're here with DVD from Tampa Bay, Florida. He is the Best Plus Lumber Rep uh, with the Recycled Plastic Lumber. Today, folks, I'm with Jim Ed Wright. Jim Ed and I are going to put on this plastic trailer floor. I think it's going to look good. And again, we're making this out of recycled plastic lumber. Enjoy. So I've got our saw set up for the right length right here. And I'm using the trailer as a stop. So as long as I don't move my saw, all of these will be the same length.
out. We went through good the first time. <laughs> So what we're using here is a tapered thread screw, so we just drill the hole and the screw takes care of the rest. So DVD and I finished out this back row and then went ahead and put another row a foot from the front. A little bit overkill, but it'll just keep anything from ever moving around or shifting. So after that, I went ahead and drilled some holes in the plastic lumber so that I can run my bolts back through the frame so I can put my tie downs for my tank and my pressure washer. So now all is left is getting you a little video on the finished product, and here that is. So here is our after shot. I've got the hose reels mounted, and I will show you how those work. Got the plastic lumber on, got the tank on, pressure washers mounted, got a J-bolt coming up through the floor right here locks it down on that side and another one that locks it down up under there. So that is going nowhere. I also put a plastic 2x4 here. Um, this shouldn't really move around but that would keep it from scooting forward any even though it's strapped down tight. So I've got my bolts of course uh, down through the plastic lumber and through the frame on both of these actually move the tank back just a little bit more over the axles um, when I did this and that's part of putting the plastic lumber right here the 2x4 to keep it from kind of scooting up into the center between the uh, tie downs so what that also does is give me a little bit more room here when I'm reaching in here to, to crank it up the uh, muffler was rusted out pretty bad I ordered a new muffler from for this that was very inexpensive on Amazon I'll go ahead and put a link in that. But, uh, you know, new wires. The uh, vehicle I have this hooked to uses a plug like this. So I simply bought this little piece for like $10. Had a nice little coiled part on it. And then I've just locked it into this four pin. Uh, ran the new wires through and got the uh, wider LED brake lights there. So. Yeah, everything's 100% uh, on this. It's ready to go. I even uh, put a welded a spot on there for the spare tire and got that mounted. The greatest thing about this trailer having a plastic floor being a pressure washer trailer is chemicals will not harm the floor. Okay, so here is kind of the summary of what we did on the trailer. We, uh, we got everything completed. Uh, replaced the muffler. We Put it, mounted a spare tire, bought some steel, bought some paint, and some plastic lumber. So all in, we're right around $600. I bought the trailer for $1,000, so I've got about $1,600 in it. I think it's probably worth somewhere around $2,200 to $2,500 as is, but you know who knows till you sell it. Come on over and I'll show you how the uh, hose reels work. Okay, so here's kind of how this mechanism works. It's, it's right now locked in where it won't move. So I pick this up and I move this over to a spot where it holds it up. So now it can turn freely. So if I wanted to turn this all the way around and lock it in, I would do so like that. 
Okay, so this handle works the same way. Um, you pull it out and see it catches right there. And now the, the reel can move freely. So I can pull the hose out. And the idea is I can run this up to a house and hook it in. And then what it will do is it'll run through this and out of here. And this hose, all I gotta do is hook this up and I can put a, another hose on this, spray some stuff off with a nozzle where the main intention will be to put it in here and fill this up. Um, your regular house is gonna do about nine gallons per minute coming through a hose. Uh, this pressure washer will pull out four gallons a minute. So even if you're running the pressure washer the whole time, this is running in faster, a little better than twice as fast as you're pulling out. So it'll help fill this up while you're pressure washing. Okay, so we've got this hose. We just were finished using it, we've unhooked it. So now all we have to do is roll it back up. I put me a stop on here, so roll it all the way up to there. Flip this over, let it lock, pick this up, move it toward the inside of the trailer, let it lock, and both are ready for shipment. This one right here, this one here works the same way. You got a hundred foot hose on here. You can pull out, you can spin it around, you can point it that way, you point it forward, back, and uh, it rolls up really quick. So the nice thing is you can get on a job site and roll it out really quick, roll it back really quick, roll out 15 feet of it, lock it back in, and then and then roll it back. So this, this is why you have the hose reels on here just for speed and convenience while you're working. So thank you for, thank you for joining me during this uh, build of this trailer. If you enjoyed it, please uh, subscribe, like, and turn on your notifications. It really helps build the channel and appreciate you joining us. Thank you.